right. As geography is my worst subject, I am going to take my time here. Um, I don't think it's the Cambrians or the Pennines, so I'm pretty sure it must be Grampians. You didn't take that much time. <laughs> uh, you're right. <laughs> Kevin, Morningside is a genteel suburb of which British city? Is it Edinburgh, London or Belfast? Yeah, it's supposed to have a very posh Scottish accent there. It's Edinburgh. Quite right. Back to you, Helen. What is the world's shallowest ocean in terms of average depth? Is it the Indian, the Arctic or the Atlantic? Maybe working this out completely wrongly, but I think it's the Marianas Trench, one of the deepest, and there's that the Indian Ocean, um, uh, Arctic Atlantic. Atlantic would be pretty deep, I would think, but because it's big, um, Arctic has a lot of clear places. So um, I'm going to go, going to go Atlantic. You're wrong. It's Arctic. But your logic was taking you towards Arctic, and then you kind of swerved away. I thought I was being too, too logical. No, it was brilliant. <laughs> you just went one, two, three, and then you went back to two. Sorry about that. You got it wrong. Kevin, the Frisian Islands lie in which body of water? Is it the North Sea, Baltic Sea, or Mediterranean Sea? They're um, mostly off the Netherlands, although some are off Germany as well, so they belong to the two countries uh, and it's the North Sea quite right it is the North Sea no messing around from Kevin today indeed there usually isn't any messing around from Kevin so you need to get this right Helen if you don't I'm afraid you won't play in the final round in which country is the so-called Great Bend of the Nile located is it Egypt Sudan or Uganda again it's going to be a guess Egypt seems a bit too obvious. Sudan or, and Uganda seems totally unlikely. So on that premise, <laughs> I'll go for Uganda. <laughs> Uganda seems totally unlikely, so you've gone for Uganda. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, it's wrong. It was really, really unlikely, and it is Sudan. Which means... Helen, you were close to giving him a run for his money, no question, but Kevin has won that round. Kevin will play in the final with the Eggheads, and I'm afraid the Flame Academy lose another team member from the final. Do come back to us. So this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So that's Phil, Helen, and Neil from Flame Academy will have to go. CJ from the Eggheads as well, please leave the studio. Let's just remind ourselves we have a really big prize now. Gus and Eric, you are playing to win the Flame Academy 22,000 pounds. Judith, Kevin, Daphne and Chris, you're playing for something which money can't buy, which is the Eggheads' reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge. You are allowed to confirm. So Flame Academy, the question is, are your two brains better than the eggheads one two three four and do you want to go first or second we're going to work as a team we're going to do it my way and we're going to go first first set of questions here we go for you and good luck what type of dog is lady in the disney animation lady and the tramp dalmatian cocker spaniel or pekingese it's not a dalmatian definitely not a dalmatian I don't think it's a peak. I seem to remember. I think it looks like Alex a cocker cock spaniel. Cock right? I think that as well. Yeah. I remember the romantic scene eating the spaghetti. I do. Right. I think we'll go cocker spaniel. Yeah. Cocker spaniel. Cocker spaniel is the correct answer. Phew! Well done. In the nursery rhyme, eggheads, what does little Jack Horner pull out of his Christmas pie? Plum, baby, or coin? <laughs> Little Jack Horner sat in the corner, eating his Christmas pie, put on his thumb and pulled out the plum, and said, what a good boy am I. <laughs> that plum. <laughs> that is plum, yes, I heard the word plum, and you are right, eggheads. One each. Back to you, Flames. 0151 is the dialing code of which British city? Glasgow, Birmingham, 
or Liverpool? Ooh. Well, one, um, well, one, five, one. Well, I live 11 miles from Liverpool. <laughs> and I'm fairly, I'm fairly sure it's Liverpool. Because it's because Manchester's 0161, Liverpool's 0151, and you see, I always get the two mixed up. I'm just hoping not doing it now. But, uh, I'm fairly, I'm fairly sure it's Liverpool. Oh, so, uh, well, yeah, you're a local boy, so we'll go with you. L Liverpool. <laughs> Correct. <I'm sorry. laughs> two out of two. Hey, kids, what is the literal translation of the title of the Spanish newspaper, El País? Does it mean the country? The world or the voice? Could you spell pace? Oh, yes, pace. Country. P A I S. The French is pay for country, so it must be pay. Because that world would be on the and the voice over on the outside of the country. That's a country. Your answer is correct. Flame Academy. Which architect designed the Cenotaph War Memorial in Whitehall? Edwin Lutyens, Norman Shaw, or Giles Gilbert Scott? Any ideas? Yeah, I think I yeah. am. Um, you mention it every year on Remembrance Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. we do all the facts and figures of all the dance. Um, of of, of the three? Yeah. The only one I've even heard of was Lutyens. Well, that's the one I think it is, that's Edwin Lutyens. Okay. Edwin Luchins. So that's your answer? Yeah. You don't want to get this wrong? But you're right. Okay. <laughs> really good play. Hey, kids, you need to get this question right. Which sport dating from the 17th century takes place on Dover Hill in Gloucestershire every year? Is it elbow barging, shin kicking, or thigh slapping? I know of as an actual sport there, if you can call it that, is shin kicking. Yes. There's this thing called the Cotswold Olympics. Oh, yes. And Dover Hill, I'm not sure if I've heard it described as Dover Hill, but there is a Dover Hill involved somewhere. And shin kicking, I think, certainly forms part of the Cotswold Olympics. Well, you're the only one with any idea, so, yes. We are going to go for shin kicking. Okay. The correct answer is shin kicking. Oh, God. Well hey, kids, you are still alive. Flame Academy. We go to sudden death. These questions are harder because they're not multiple choice. Here is yours. Which river delineates most of Bulgaria's northern border with Romania? Romania. It's not the Volga, is it? I don't know, mate. That, if, 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 we'll just build it. Um, I'm thinking Eastern Europe, Danube, Volga. I was, I was thinking Danube, but uh, I'm going to go Volga. Can't think of anything else. I don't want to go with. Yeah, I've got That's as good as I will get, right here. Volga. It's the Danube, you're oh. wrong. <laughs> we had two, we had two, we had a bit of two. Maybe jumped a bit too quickly there. We haven't got any shortage of time here. You can think. Hey, kids, if you get this question right, they have lost their chance of the jackpot, the money, and it's a lot of money. Here is your question, hey, kids. In February 2008, which AC Milan footballer made his 1,000th competitive appearance as a professional? Well, the only one I can... for that, that many. In terms of length of career and age, the only one I could come up with is Paolo Maldini. I, I mean, I can't think of anybody else who is too early for, much too early for Inzaghi or... It's got to be Paolo. I mean, if he's still playing, it's got to be Paolo Maldini. I, 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 I'm not certain. I'm not certain. No, you aren't. All right. Um, I think a, a thousand games, it's a long career. And I think he's still playing. I, I hope he's still playing. Paolo Maldini. The thousand games include a record 126 Italian caps, one Olympic Games appearance, 12 Italian under-21 team caps, 861 appearances for his club, only ever played for AC Milan, 
You're right, it was Paolo Maldini. Congratulations, Eggheads, you've won. Commiserations.